Good afternoon, boys and girls. This is Brian McParland. I teach math at Ridgedale Middle School in Florham Park. I also have Lisa DeFonte with me as well, who's also a math teacher at Ridgedale Middle School. We wanted to um, give you a little bit of a challenge today and sort of mix it up for you in terms of doing some math today. So there's math puzzles here that uh, will relate back to math, and you have to use numbers in different ways, and you have to use logic in different ways. Okay, so we have seven puzzles. We're gonna walk through the first two with you. And what we really want you to do is to come up with answers with them for the, for the puzzles, and then just make sure you can support them. There are more than one answer to each puzzle. So before you get into arguments with each other, you can um, go through and just make sure you support it. In the first puzzle, boys and girls, um, always, always, as Mr. McParland said, think about it. When you see numbers, the first thing you might think of is patterns. And always ask yourself, what do you see and what do you notice about the relationship of the numbers? So when we get to the next side, slide, you'll see that there are numbers to the right and to the left of an equal sign. So ask yourself, what, how? What are the numbers? How are they related? and then make a guess. And always make sure you're able to prove, support your reasoning. And as was already said to you, there might be another reason behind someone's thinking. So again, before you start going back and forth, I'm right, no, I'm right, listen carefully to someone else's thoughts because at certain instances, there can be and will be more than one answer as long as you can support it. Okay, this is your first puzzle. So your first puzzle is um, two numbers that are set equal to each other. And they want you to figure out sort of what's going on between the numbers. So you wanna look at what's happening and you also wanna figure out what they're asking me for. So the question mark down the bottom is what they're asking me to get to. There's numbers going from nine equals 90, eight equals 72, seven equals 56. When you look at the picture and step back and look at it a whole, I, my first thought would be, okay, nine times 10 is 90, eight times 10 is not equal to 72, so that's not gonna work. When I look closer and try to find a relationship between the numbers, I notice that, well, nine times eight is 72. Okay, so there's something I have there. Let, let me follow that pattern. I do notice now that eight times seven is 56 and seven times six is 42. I've got a pretty well established pattern here. So it looks like you're multiplying the number before it and you're getting, and whatever those two uh, products are, that's what you're getting as an answer on the equal sign. So for example, nine times eight, the product of that would be 72. So when I, when I look at this first time around, I'm saying, oh, my answer has to be 18. So if you think about it, you say, well, that makes sense. I'm gonna multiply the number before it but I missed one key fact here. What's happening with the numbers on the left, you're going down by one. Nine, eight, seven, six. Then they skipped all the way to three. Okay, so that's gonna be a little bit of a problem because I, they left out five and four. So what I have to do is I almost have to insert five and four to figure out what my number is gonna be for the question mark. So it looks like what they were doing is they were doing nine, the number on top times the number on the bottom equals that product equals a number next to it. So I have to now insert the five and insert the four. So I'm gonna do four times three, not six times three, four times three, and that's gonna be equal to 12. So the answer to my puzzle here based on the pattern and based on inserting additional pieces of information, it's gonna be the question mark is equal to 12. You agree, Ms. Devante? I do, and as if you just listen to the explanation which was given and you heard all the thinking going on. Keep in mind, someone might arrive at the answer of 12, as you just heard, in a different way. And when you see the answers at the end of this presentation, you'll see what Mr. McParlin and I are speaking about. And again, as I mentioned, listen closely, because as I was listening to Mr. McParlin, before I could jump in and say anything, he already answered my questions. So he presented his rationale, his reasoning, and very thoroughly and detailed. And again, you will see another 
sketched out answer at the end. Great job, Mr. McFarlane. Thank you. The other thing you could have done since multiplication and division were together is you could have said, well, what if I did some division? If I would have done 72 divided by 8, that would equal 9. 56 divided by 7, that would equal 8. So there's definitely different ways to look at it. Puzzle number two. So if you look here, you notice little different from the other puzzle or two, that not only are there numbers, but there are letters as well. So there's a little hint there that says the puzzle challenges your knowledge of both math and spelling. And as Mr. McParland said at the beginning, you know, some of them might challenge you on a little more abstract level. So here you have to think what's going on. I don't see any operations. I see numbers, I see letters, uh, I don't know. So when I looked at this, I stared at it and I said, well, let me start out with a guess and then work that through everything else. So I said, one times one times one times one is four. The number four, and then I said, it just came to me, if I spell the number four, F-O-U-R, R is the last letter of the word for. And then I went to the next one and I tested my reasoning there. So I multiplied two by two by two by two, and I got 16. 16. And the last letter in 16 is not T. Two to the fourth. So that can't be right. Then I did three to the fourth is 80, 81. 81. So you're not feeling that comfortable with your multiplication now. That's probably not your rule. Uh, I'm not feeling comfortable with that. And then the last one, I, I don't know what to do. So what you need to do is to continue to go through it and see what you might be able to come up with. How are the numbers related with those letters? Perfect. I would leave it there because they, you, you gave them the first clue, which you guys should build off of. One, 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 and one is gonna get you to four, so the last letter ends in R. So for these puzzles, guys, um, try this one. The answers are in the back for all of them, and there's detailed explanation for all of them. So there's, uh, this was puzzle two, so Mr. Fonte started you off with a clue of four. You guys have to finish it off on your own. Then there's five more puzzles for you to solve with all the answers and rationale or explanation listed at the end. The big thing with doing an exercise like this, and for all the math we have you doing all the way through high school is, you wanna come up with a process, prove your process, make sure it works for all cases, and be able to explain it. That's the key thing. Okay, Ms. Stefante, have anything to add? No, nope. thank you okay, so much. Okay, guys, enjoy the rest of the puzzles. Have a great summer. Take care. Bye.